In December 1976, several major freight railroads across the United States began restricting and in some cases outright banning Amtrak's new fleet of 150 SDP-40F locomotives from their tracks. Even after investigations, no one could identify a single proven cause that everyone agreed on. At this point, Amtrak is running these shiny new SDP-40Fs all over the country. They are the first new locomotives Amtrak had since the company started in 1971. Until then, they had been limping along with ancient E units and F units that the freight railroads were happy to dump on them. Those locomotives were 20 years old and falling apart. These SDP-40F locomotives were supposed to change everything. They were brand new machines, delivered in 1973 and 1974, and they were barely three years old when the whole thing went sideways. On the night of December 16, 1976, near Ralston, Nebraska, one of the locomotives derailed at about 2.45 in the morning, and 63 people were injured. 48 passengers and 15 crew members were thrown around when the train came apart on a 2-degree 30-minute curve. Burlington Northern took one look at the wreckage and the $816,000 in damage and told Amtrak to get every SDP-40F off their tracks immediately. No exceptions. They said they were done with these locomotives. About a month later, on the Louisville and Nashville Railroad near Newcastle, Alabama, another derailment on a curve involving an SDP-40F hits the headlines, and now everybody in the railroad industry is starting to panic about what is going on. Between 1974 and 1976, there were more than a dozen derailments involving these locomotives, and the Federal Railroad Administration tracked every one of them. Several of the worst wrecks shared a similar pattern. Trains entered relatively gentle curves at 40 to 60 miles per hour, and a trailing SDP-40F, often with a baggage car behind it, left the rails. Burlington Northern will not touch them anymore after Ralston. Chesapeake and Ohio bars them from service completely. Chessie System tells Amtrak to get them off their property. Other railroads are slapping 40 miles per hour speed limits on any SDP-40F running through curves over 2 degrees. And suddenly, Amtrak's entire long-distance network is crawling along like it's stuck in traffic. The Empire Builder, running between Chicago and Seattle, had its schedule fell apart because the train was crawling through curves at 40 miles per hour instead of running at normal track speed. That added hours to the trip, wrecked Amtrak's on-time performance, and gave the press an easy target to tear into this brand new passenger railroad that suddenly could not keep its trains on schedule. Amtrak brought in everyone it could think of, the FRA, the Association of American Railroads, EMD, and Amtrak's own engineering staff to figure out what was actually causing this. They ran every test they could imagine. Could it be those hollow bolster HTC trucks that EMD designed? Maybe. What about 3,500 gallons of water sloshing around in tanks, with 1,350 gallons sitting above the floor and 2,150 gallons in the underbody tank? That amount of water could create enough lateral motion to throw the whole locomotive off balance. Harmonic vibration between a heavy locomotive and lightweight baggage cars running immediately behind it is another possibility. And track quality, in many places with deteriorated cross ties and wide gauge, is certainly part of the problem. After all the tests and reports, nobody can actually prove a single definitive cause that explains every derailment. The NTSB investigates Ralston and says the probable cause was lateral movement of the high rail and widening of track gauge because the deteriorated cross ties could not withstand the lateral forces from the locomotive traveling at 53 miles an hour. That sounds like it is the track fault, not the locomotive. But the railroads are screaming that it is definitely the locomotives doing it, that these locomotives are spreading the rails apart and breaking track everywhere they go and railroad workers start calling them rail breakers.
EMD runs their tests and suggests changes that might improve the tracking, but with the derailments piling up and 4-axle F40PHs already proving themselves on other routes, Amtrak decides it is done with these locomotives and starts moving toward replacing them instead of betting more money on fixes. 4 axles instead of 6, shorter wheelbase, none of the derailment problems, none of the drama, and no railroads are banning them from service. So in 1977, barely three years after the locomotives were delivered brand new, Amtrak starts trading them back to EMD. 40 units go back first, and EMD tears them apart to pull out the engines, alternators, traction motors, and whatever else they can salvage to stuff into new F40PH frames to save money on the new order. Within just a few years, a big chunk of the fleet is already gone traded in or sidelined, and by 1987, 132 of the original 150 have either been scrapped outright or gutted for parts and rebuilt into something else. That leaves 18 units still sitting around, and nobody wants to touch them. Except Santa Fe decides they will take a chance on them. In 1984, Santa Fe works out a trade with Amtrak, giving them 25 CF-7 locomotives and 18 SSB-1200 switchers in exchange for those last 18 SDP-40F locomotives that nobody else in the industry would go near. Santa Fe hauls all 18 units out to their shops in San Bernardino, California, and completely rebuilds them for freight service. They rip out the steam generators, pull out all the water tanks, fill the empty space with concrete for ballast, swap out the hollow bolster trucks for conventional ones, add front steps and platforms, and give them a new designation as SDF-42 units. And this is where the whole story gets really weird. Those 18 locomotives run in freight service for Santa Fe and later BNSF until they finally retire them in 2002, hauling freight all over the Southwest for nearly 20 years without ever developing the same kind of derailment pattern that had killed them in Amtrak service. Same basic locomotive, same railroad tracks, no problems whatsoever. And it's not just the Santa Fe conversions either. The F40C commuter units that Chicago's commuter agencies bought in the mid-70s were basically the same basic concept as the SDP-40F, just with head-end power instead of steam generators. Fifteen of them were built, and they ran for decades without showing the same derailment pattern that wrecked the SDP-40F's reputation. The FP-45s that the SDP-40F's design was heavily based on were nearly identical in overall layout. They ran hard in passenger service, and they never developed the kind of recurring derailment trouble that followed the SDP-40F. So what was actually causing the derailments? Was it really the locomotive design like the railroads claimed? The water sloshing around in those big tanks? The hollow bolster trucks that EMD used? the poor track quality with deteriorated ties and wide gauge, the baggage cars creating some kind of harmonic oscillation when coupled behind these specific locomotives. Nobody knows for sure even today, and that is exactly why people still argue about it. The FRA said 13 derailments, none of them serious, no deaths, just injuries and bent metal, but 13 was enough to kill the entire fleet. 150 brand new locomotives were delivered to Amtrak, most of them were scrapped or completely rebuilt after just a few years of service. Only one survivor is known to remain today, former Amtrak number 644, which is preserved at the Illinois Railway Museum. The rest either became components for other trains or disappeared into scrapyards. And we still do not know for certain if Amtrak made the right call to get rid of them all, or if they panicked and destroyed 150 perfectly good locomotives because of track problems and baggage car design flaws that were not even the engine's fault to begin with. 